Welcome to a journey of mysticism, spirituality, and enlightenment. Today, we delve deep into the profound and timeless wisdom surrounding the hallowed enclave of Shambhala. Join us as we uncover the esoteric truths, hidden within the narratives of cultures and religions across the globe. Stay with us as we explore the symbolism of the lotus and the rose, both serving as metaphors for the unfolding of the soul's qualities. Prepare to be captivated by the story of Shambhala, the sacred city in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia, and its role as a center for the guidance of our world. It's time to embark on an extraordinary journey, one that begins within yourself and radiates outward. Welcome to the sacred enigma of Shambhala. In every tale, in every revered doctrine, there exists a singular locus, sanctified above all else, emblematic of the highest ideals inherent in that belief. To the Norsemen, it was Valhalla, the city of the slain, wrought from the spears of valorous heroes, where ceaseless feasting and ceaseless warfare defined existence. There, heroes clashed under the sun and reveled under the moon's gentle embrace. A daily ritual was the slaying of the wild boar, followed by a banquet, only for the cycle to renew itself with the sun. In the northern realms, Valhalla was believed to perch atop lofty peaks, linked to the world below by Bifrost, the Rainbow Bridge. Along this bridge, the gods traversed and Odin, the Allfather, descended from Asgard, the divine haven of the gods, to toil alongside humankind. Among the Greeks, Mount Olympus stood as the sacred apex, where gods resided on the summit of the heavens. The Knights of the Grail found their fortress among the crags and heights of northern Spain, atop Mount Salvert. In every faith, a sacred sanctum exists, Meru in the east and Mount Moriah and Mount Sinai, where the tablets of law were bequeathed to mortals. Each of these places symbolizes a universal archetype. It is posited that these religious narratives all culminate in a singular metropolis, Shambhala, the sacred city ensconced within the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. In the Orient, elaborate legends enshroud this hallowed city, where it is whispered that the Great White Lodge, or the Brotherhood, assembles to govern the world's destinies. Much like the Twelve Aesir of Scandinavia or the Twelve Olympian Gods, it is said that the Great White Brotherhood comprises twelve members who convene in Shambhala, guiding the affairs of humanity. It is believed that this epicenter of universal spirituality descended upon the earth when the polar cap, the first part of our world to solidify, became capable of sustaining life. Scientific inquiry has divulged the Earth's multifaceted movements, including not only its axial rotation and solar orbit but also nine other intricate motions, as expounded by Flammarion, the eminent French astronomer. Among these motions lies the concept of pole alternation, signifying that the current North Pole will, someday, transform into the South Pole. Consequently, the sacred city is thought to have relocated after centuries of migration and now finds its dwelling amidst the Mongolian expanse. Within the annals of the Islamic faith, there exists a profound rite, the pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca, where innumerable pilgrims embark on a journey to venerate the Stone of Abraham. This sacred aerolite, where the Prophet Muhammad is said to have rested his foot, draws people of all ages, some even carried across desert sands, subjecting themselves to manifold hardships, often traveling great distances to visit this cherished sanctum. India mirrors this devout journey with a multitude of holy places that beckon pilgrims, just as the Templars did in Christianity with their pilgrimage to the Sepulchre of Christ. To many, these pilgrimages are mere outward symbols, yet the discerning scholar perceives profound esoteric truths concealed within. The spiritual consciousness within each individual embarks on its personal mecca, ascending through the body centers and neural pathways, akin to a pilgrim scaling the heights of Sinai or a knight of the grail returning to Mount Salvert. As the sacred fire within the human spine commences its ascent, it pauses at numerous altars, paying homage to the divine essences harbored within, much like the Masonic brother ascending Jacob's ladder. The path leading to heaven is both upward and inward. The spinal fire traverses the seedbeds of profound principles, worshipping at the sanctuaries of countless divine essences enshrined within. Yet, its unceasing journey is always skyward, ultimately reaching the vast desert. This spiritual wasteland serves as the Gethsemane of the elevated man, but after enduring suffering and toil, it finally traverses the sacred desert. Ahead, within the lotus of the heart, the golden city of Shambhala ascends, awaiting the intrepid seeker. 
The divine realm within man resides within the expansive frontal sinus, situated between the eyes, cloaked in a unique gaseous substance wherein the ethereal spirit exists. This ethereal essence is the lost city in the sacred desert, linked to the mortal realm via the rainbow bridge or the silver cord. It is to this inner citadel that the scholar aspires. This, indeed, is the sacred pilgrimage of the soul, where the individual departs from the realm of the lower man and the world beneath, ascending into the domain of the higher man of a higher world, the cerebral domain. This constitutes the grand journey to Shambhala. Just as Shambhala serves as the epicenter for the earth's governance, the corresponding citadel within man stands as the central regulator of his governance. Only when the divine principles, symbolized by the gods descending the rainbow bridge, labor alongside him, imparting wisdom and knowledge, does he rightfully claim his divine birthright. In the Orient, the scholar ardently anticipates the day when he may pay homage before the gates of the sacred city, bearing witness to the initiates convening in silent congress around the zodiac's circular table. The unveiling of the Isis veil and the revelation of the Grail Cup are long for moments. It is imperative to understand that all these phenomena must first manifest within the individual before they can be witnessed in the external universe. The twelve elder brothers within must be discovered and comprehended before the corresponding figures in the external world become intelligible. To encounter the great initiates in the external realm, one must first find them within. Similarly, to behold the sacred city in the lotus blossom, one must first unfurl that lotus within, petal by petal, through purification and attunement to the higher principles within. The lotus corresponds to the spinal column, its roots entrenched in materiality, its blossom representing the brain. Only by channeling upward nourishment and strength can the lotus within the individual blossom fully, disseminating its spiritual fragrance. Occasionally, one might observe in storefront displays quaint Chinese deities or Oriental Buddhas seated atop lotus blossoms. In fact, upon closer inspection, a myriad of Oriental gods are depicted in this manner. This signifies their attunement to the spiritual consciousness, known as Shashuma. The distinctive headdresses worn by Hindu gods are fashioned to resemble an inverted flower, echoing the budding of consciousness within. When the lotus bloom reaches maturity, it casts its seeds, giving rise to new life. This mirrors the spiritual consciousness, which, upon completing its mission, is liberated to create and engender new manifestations. In the Western sphere, the lotus has transformed into the rose, symbolizing the awakening of consciousness, and the unfolding of man's innate spiritual attributes. When an individual awakens and unfurls this bud within, much like the golden pollen in a flower, they discover the awe-inspiring spiritual city of Shambhala ensconced within the heart of the lotus. Upon concluding the spiritual voyage of the inner fire, the liberated soul ascends from the apex of the mountain, mirroring the ascent of Christ, as the spiritual being, emancipated from the wheel of bondage, ascends from the convolutions of the brain, their cry echoing the ancient initiate's proclamation that has resounded through the mystery schools for generations. With this final cry, the profound enigma of Shambhala, the sacred city, is unveiled. They join the ranks of the pristine figures clad in the white robes of purity, their own soul bodies, gazing down upon the world, witnessing others undergo a similar transformation, and heralding the eternal declaration, Consumatum est, it is accomplished. Thank you for joining us on this voyage through the mysteries of Shambhala and the spiritual realms within. We hope you found inspiration and enlightenment in our exploration of the lotus and the rose, and their significance in the journey of self-discovery. As we conclude this chapter, remember that the true mystery of Shambhala, the sacred city, is a revelation that unfolds within. If you thirst for more mystical journeys and profound insights, stay tuned for what's next. Until we meet again, may your path be filled with wisdom and enlightenment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating explorations of the enigmatic and spiritual world. Until next time, stay enlightened and keep seeking the sacred mysteries that lie within and around us.